Fellow believers, greetings in the holy name of Christ Jesus. Welcome to Bill King Ministries. And as you know, I'm Evangelist Bill King. And I appreciate you joining us this Sunday morning and allowing me to share God's word with you as we worship and praise his son, Christ Jesus. And it's my humble prayer God uses this message for his will and that it may edify all who partake. Amen. The title of my message this morning is That the World May Know. <clears throat> now I'll be preaching from John 17, 20 through 23, John 8, 12, John 10, 29 through 30, John 10, 37 through 38, Matthew 16, 13 through 17, Back to John 17, 26, and then back to Matthew 22, 37 through 39. And those are in order of precedence in their use in this message. If you have your Bibles along with you and you, you wish to, uh, to follow along at the appropriate times. Now there's four points to my message. And let me stop before, I be, before we begin. Let us say a prayer and keep in, in our hearts and our minds those in the the Nashville, Tennessee, Kentucky, South Kentucky border area that were hit by a, a uh, maybe a couple, but we know of at least one strong tornado uh, last night, late last night. Uh, the cities that were directly impacted that I know of were uh, Clarksville, um, Hendersonville, and I can't think of the other one, but they were at least that we know of six fatalities from this deadly tornado last night. So let us keep them in our prayers, as well as all the thousands of people in the Nashville and the, in the Clarksville and Hendersonville area right now who are without power on this Sunday morning. Thank you. Getting back to our message. There's four points to my message this morning. The first one being, Christians are called upon to be one with our Christian brothers and sisters. Being one requires more than merely demonstrating brotherly love. Three, oneness. Oneness per Jesus' own words. It may in fact bring about a revelation unto the world of non-believers. And through our display of oneness, they may come to know that Christ Jesus is indeed the Son of God, the Messiah. And the last one, the fourth point, and this is, this, is, this is truly sad, but I know it to be a fact from personal observation. Unfortunately, oneness and unity amongst many Christian churchgoers has quickly become a thing of the past. Anyone having been a Christian for any length of time knows all too well the emphasis placed on brotherly love. That is, we are called upon to not only demonstrate, but to nurture a strong sense of love for our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. And yet Christ Jesus in praying to the Father on behalf of all believers, as found in the book of John, he takes it quite a bit further. Let's see what the Holy Bible says in quoting John 17, 20 through 23. That's going to be John 17, 20 through 23. And I'll give you some time. Perhaps out of all the apostles, Apostle John, he spoke more numerously and more dearly and more deeply of love than perhaps them all. And I would say there was a good reason for that. As you should know that Apostle John was always referred to as the one Jesus loved, the beloved of Jesus. And at his crucifixion as he hung upon the cross of Calvary. 
Christ Jesus looked out amongst the crowd and he saw his mother, the Virgin Mary, standing there with Apostle John by her side. And he said to, to them, Mother, behold your son. Son, behold your mother. And from that point on, Apostle John took Mary into his house and cared for her the rest of his life. That's just a bit of history. But getting to John 17, 20 through 23, quote, I do, this is Jesus praying to God. I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. That's important. That they all may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me and the glory which you gave me, I have given them, that they may be one just as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and here it is, and that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved me as you and, and, as, and has, have loved them as you have loved me. And that's John 17, 20 through 23. And that's where I get the title of this message this morning. That the world may know that you have sent me. Now note, Jesus has already prayed to God the Father on behalf of the disciples. He did that. Prior to, just prior to this. Now he's praying unto the Father on behalf of those who believe in him through their words. That's very important. As it is by our words that we confess our sins unto Christ Jesus. And it is by our words we ask him to enter into our hearts as Lord and Savior. Amen. Specifically, in quote, for those who will believe in me through their word, that they all may be as one as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. Now, there's four key terms or phrases in that passage that I'd like to point out. The first one being, quote, that they all may be as one. The second one, quote, that they also may be one in us, in God the Father in Christ Jesus. That's the us. Three, quote, that they may be made perfect in one. And fourth, quote, that the world may believe that you sent me. Brotherly love shared between children of God is truly a wonderful expression of faith. It is, and is duly called for. Yet Jesus, Christ Jesus instructs that we, Christians, exude brotherly love to such an extent as to be as one, just as the Father is in him and he is in the Father. They are one. Our being one enables us to be one in them, God the Father and Christ Jesus, bringing us closer to Christ's own perfectionism as humanly possible, for that's what we should all strive for. We're never going to get there. There was only one entity, one person, one man who ever walked the face of this earth who was perfect, and that was Jesus Christ, Jesus of Nazareth, and we're never going to be perfect. We need to strive for as, as hard and as fast as we can for Christ's perfectionism as, as near as humanly possible as we can be. For, I got off on, on a tangent. For he says, quote, that they may be made perfect in one. Perfect in one. Now, what's the key takeaway from Christ Jesus' teachings? Hmm? That's the question. What's the key takeaway from Christ Jesus' teachings 
in this prayer to his God, to his Father? What's his primary purpose and intent for all Christians and brothers and brothers and sisters being one other other than bringing us into oneness in them, that is God the Father in Christ Jesus, or making us perfect as one? What's the key takeaway? What's his primary purpose and intent other than those? The answer is, quote, that the world may believe that you sent me. Now that deserves repeating, my brothers and sisters, quote, that the world may believe that you sent me. You see, during Jesus' three-year ministry, from the moment he arose out of the River Jordan, having been baptized by John the Baptist, till the time he perished, giving up his spirit on the cross of Calvary. He consistently and deliberately proclaimed he was the Son of God, the Messiah, prophesied down through the ages preceding his arrival on earth. And as you may well recall, not only did he proclaim himself as such to all people, the world, primarily the Jews, but even to the Pharisees and Sadducees, the Jewish high authority, the religious Jewish high authorities, igniting their fury against him, as was his intent and purpose, so as to lead to his crucifixion, death, resurrection, and ascension. That was their plan, his and God the Father's plan. He carried it out to the letter. And, I'm th and we should all be thankful for that. Amen. Additionally, he questioned his disciples as to who they had heard the people say he was. Who they, that is the disciples, believed he was. And he also reminded them at times that he was indeed the Son of God, the Messiah. For the Holy Bible says, in quoting John 8, 12, John 8, 12. Quote, Then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. And in quoting John 10, 29 through 30, John 10, 29 through 30, quote, my father who has given them to me is greater than all and no one is able to snatch them out of my father's hand. I and my father are one. Jesus just affirmed right there that he was God incarnate. And in quoting John 10, 37 through 80, if I do not do the works of my Father, do not believe me. But if I do, though you do not believe me, believe the works that you may know and believe that the Father is in me and I in him. And our last quote on that, on that part, I'm going to quote Matthew 16, 13 through 17. Matthew 16, 13 through 17. And I'll give you a few minutes because we're jumping from John to Matthew. I'll give you a few minutes to get there. Matthew 16, 13 through 17. This is where he questioned the disciples. Matthew 16, 13 through 17, quote, When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? So they said, Some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? And here it comes, Simon Peter stepping up. Simon Peter answered and said, 
You are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Bar-Jonah. Bar-Jonah means son of Jonah. For flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And so we see the importance and emphasis Christ Jesus placed on not only proclaiming himself unto the world as the Son of God, the Messiah, but convincing them not only through his words, but his works, that is, miracles performed, that he was indeed the Son of God, the Messiah. His words and his works went hand in hand. And just as Christ Jesus emphasized his divinity unto the world, stressing he was in fact who he said he was, that is the Son of God, the Messiah, and further adding, if anyone didn't believe him by his word alone, they should believe him by his works. Now in his prayer unto God the Father on behalf of all believers, he teaches all Christians the importance of becoming one with one another, just as he and God the Father are one. For as the world sees us, that is us Christians, as the world sees us, the world of unbelievers primarily, sees us exhibiting and nurturing not only brotherly love, but oneness as well. They, that is the unbelievers, those not of the faith, well, they may be convinced that he is indeed the Son of God, the Messiah, and thereby earnestly repent of their sins, calling upon him to enter into their hearts as Lord and Savior and receiving the precious gift of eternal life after death, salvation for their very souls. Hallelujah and amen. Now that's a lesson I learned in seminary presented to me by a pastor, Francis Chan, an instructor with the Christian Leaders Institute. And it's an eye-opening revelation. And I do so pray we all leave here this morning fully aware that though brotherly love is important and duly called for, it's our being one, our oneness, which is more important. For through such the non-believers of this world may see the light, repent, and be saved. And that came out of Jesus Christ's own mouth. And if we can't trust and follow and obey that, then we have a serious problem, my brothers and sisters. Amen. Now, as a side note, my last point this morning, and some churchgoers, some Christian churchgoers may take offense to this. Well, so be it. I don't preach what their ears want to hear. I preach what needs to be said by the word of God. As a side note, so many times I've attended formal church services where churches were filled to the brim with those brandishing smiles in an outwardly gesture of enjoying sharing God's word and fellowshipping with their fellow Christian brothers and sisters. And I say outwardly, as inwardly, the majority of those in attendance that couldn't wait for the services to conclude so as to bid au revoir to everyone and retreat back into the sanctuary of their homes and their hypocritical Lifestyles. Why do I label such behavior as hypocritical? Which is the primary reason so many people abandon going to church and fall away from Christianity. Hypocrites. Hypocritical behavior. Listen to me. I'm laying it out. I'm not holding no punches. Why do I label such behavior as hypocritical? 
because by doing so, they weren't truly demonstrating or nurturing, putting into motion brotherly love or oneness with their Christian brothers and sisters as Christ Jesus so instructs. No. I experienced that in the last church that I, formal church setting that I attended for a while. And it's one of the reasons that drove me to this ministry and to be an evangelist and to preach the word myself. You won't find a hypocritical bone in me. If you do, you need to slap me upside the face and tell me about it. Amen? If hypocritical describes your own behavior when attending church or outside of church, I pray you take this message to heart and enact an immediate change within. Or oh, my brothers and sisters, and listen to me, listen to me seriously, suffer the consequences of Christ's judgment for not doing so. Amen. And one last point before we conclude this service. Keying in on the continuation of Jesus' prayer unto God the Father on behalf of all Christians. It's all about love. It's all about love. Love is the most important element of God and of Jesus. And, and so should be amongst all Christian brothers and sisters. For he tells us, in quoting John 17, 26, and there's no reason to point there, to, to turn there, it's, it's real quick. John 17, 26, quote, And I have declared to them your name, and will declare it, that the love with which you love me may be in them, and I in them. And Jesus tells us the two most important of all of God's commandments are, what are they? We're going we're gonna to find that in Matthew 22, 37 through 39. Matthew 22, 37 through 39. And I'll give you time to get there because this is highly important. You do need to follow this. Quoting Matthew 22, 37 through 39. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Now, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. As I've discussed in previous sermons, that can be a bit difficult to do nowadays, especially if your neighbor isn't receptive to that love and doesn't want to have anything to do with you, but we still, by Christ's own words, we must try. Now, as we draw near our conclusion, this is very important. This is very important, and I do so look forward to this, this, this segment of our, our messages, our worship service each Sunday morning. Because this gets down to the what, what it's all about. This is discipleship personified right here. As we draw near our conclusion, if there's anyone in attendance or viewing this sermon at a later date and time who has not confessed their sins to Christ Jesus in earnest repentance and accepted him into their hearts as and lives as Lord and Savior, and if you're, and if by your own free will, you desire to do so now? Well, it's going to be my honor and my privilege to, to lead you to Christ right now. Please bow your heads and repeat the sinner's prayer with me. Heavenly Father, I am a sinner, so unworthy of your grace, mercy, and love. I hereby repent of my sins calling upon the holy name of your son, Christ Jesus, to forgive me and to enter into my heart this very moment as Lord and Savior, hereby avowing to dedicate the remainder of my life in humble, prayerful obedience to your commandments and the teachings of your son. Bless me with your grace, mercy, and love 
in accepting me as one of your children. And I pray this unto you in the name of Jesus. Amen. If you said that prayer with me and truly meant every word, well, congratulations. You are now saved, washed in the shed blood of the Lamb. Now seek out a local minister or priest and advise him or her of your newfound faith for the purpose of water baptism in accordance with Jesus' instructions. And I welcome you to the family. Also, just a few humble reminders regarding the many active GoFundMe campaigns we have at this time, seeking charitable donations for those concerned so they may continue supporting God's ministries in their countries and communities, providing food, clothing, water, shelter, as well as the gospel, the word of God, to whoever is so desperately in need. And additionally, I've recently created a GoFundMe campaign for this ministry, Bill King Ministries, as well, so I may continue to provide aid and assistance to those who seek and need such. And your loving charitable donations, contributions, will be greatly appreciated. Thank you. And I'll, I'll provide the links to those GoFundMes in the text of this message. Last, I humbly ask each of you to share my messages, video sermons, and the Bible studies posted on our ministry page, as well as my YouTube channel, with any and all who are so willing to receive. If each of you shared the link to our ministry page with just one email contact, contact, I'm confident God will bless such, making it fruitful. And in conclusion, if you enjoyed this message and agree with my teachings, and you got anything out of it at all, which I pray you did, then I welcome you to join us each Sunday morning at 1030 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I have had to bump it back to 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time here lately because of Christmas and my son and daughter-in-law's work schedule. But about 10.30 a.m. to 10.11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for our live online worship service right here at Bill King Ministries on Facebook.com. And please, bring a few friends along with you and let's share in our oneness. And now, please join me in our closing prayer. And as always, go in peace, my brothers and sisters. Go in peace. Father God in heaven, hear our praise unto you and your Son, Christ Jesus. We vow we will strive from this moment on to share not only brotherly love amongst our Christian brothers and sisters, but to exhibit and nurture a sense of oneness with them as well, so that by doing so, the non-believers of this world may see and come to realize that Christ Jesus is in fact your Son, thereby seeking Him out in the forgiveness of their sins, becoming saved, and accepted as one of your children, granted redemption and salvation. And we pray this in the holy name of Jesus. Amen.